Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Greta, if you're new here. Whew, I love talking about fragrances. If that's something that interests you, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. Today, we all love fragrances that give an intoxicating scent trail, all right? I mean, we all love it. At some point, you're looking for that. So I have for you some of my favorite, because there's a lot, but I've picked out my personal favorite and some newer ones that you may not know about for the best sillage, an intoxicating sillage that is gonna garner you attention. If that's something that interests you, stay tuned for that. Okay, I'm gonna jump right in on this. Um, because who doesn't love an intoxicating scent trail, right? I have the ones that are gonna have people looking for you. Now, I mean, what list would this be without Baccarat Rouge, right? Like Baccarat Rouge by 40 has to be on this list. And I feel like the EDP projects more than the X trait and gives more of an intoxicating trail. Like this one is just, I mean, some people don't wanna wear it anymore. They feel like it's become, a little more mainstream everyone has it it's very recognizable but there's something to that too though that when you go somewhere people are like "Ooh, that smells good it's kind of caught on i mean i went to a concert or actually like a music festival i went to uh boots in the park with my girlfriend tammy who's also on instagram and we started early we didn't like change for the nighttime and that's kind of the perfect scenario for me where I want a fragrance that doesn't last a long time, lighter, because it was wicked hot. I mean, we were like pinning our hair up. We were looking, I wanted a blow dryer. My hair was like soaking wet from sweat. I needed a freshy fragrance. But then when the sun went down, I wanted a beast. I wanted to be a little more boom shakalaka, you know? And I went to the bar to get us a beer and I'm walking up there and I'm there and I'm like, someone's wearing Baccarat Rouge. I smell Baccarat Rouge. And I'm looking around and I have not a clue where it's coming from. It was such a vast sillage. I just didn't know. Unless I started asking people randomly, are you wearing it? Are you wearing it? Are you wearing it? Like it had, it was so expansive all the way from like the stage to all the way back to like the bar. I was like, someone's wearing Baccarat Rouge. Now, if you can overpower an entire like Tim McGraw venue, that's who was on stage. If you can overpower that entire crowd with your fragrance, you got you got going on. All I gotta say is you got game. Yes, checkmate, you won, yes. I was a little jealous, I can't lie. I was, I was a little, I was, I hate being jealous. I was a little, I was a little envious and wishing I had worn that that day. So yeah. I topped up my fragrance, don't even remember what I was wearing, but yeah. Oh, I think I was wearing Herba Gold, but anyway. So yeah, this, and you know what goes along with this also is Oud for Greatness. Oud for Greatness. I personally don't like this on me. It goes a little ashtray-like, but it has that same burnt sugar saffron note in here. Saffron doesn't always do that, it's the way they do it. It has that same sweet sillage in here. I had this on my guy and I was like, try this. Literally, we were eating outdoors lunch one day and I was like, spray this on your hand. That's all he did. He squirted on his hand to try it. This was not like he wore this, sprayed it up and down, walked out the door. No, I was like, okay, for starters, that smells stinking amazing on you and it smells like an ash, a used ashtray to me on my skin. I went indoors to go to the restroom and when I was coming back out, I'm like in that hallway, just opening the door to the outdoors. And I got smacked in the face with this amazing sillage. I'm like, are you? I, I was stunned. There was indeed a little bit of a breeze in the air, but I couldn't believe he was at least 20 yards away from me. I could not believe that had weaved its way in and out because as I walked, it was in and out of my nose and whirling around in that wind. And I was just stunned at how incredibly beautiful it was. Now, mind you, it's not like that on me. 
I wish it is not, but on him, it is stunning. So I do find this more masculine for sure on me. I mean, to me, I find this more masculine, but it gives that same impact with that same sweet note in there. Another one with that same intense sillage. Somewhat similar in that it's that same piercing sweet note that you find swirling around uh, Whispers of Truth by House of Siage. Now House of Siage, I mean, with a name like that, you know they all have incredible Siage, and they do. This one was very unique to me, and the first time I wore it, oh, I'll never forget. I will never forget. It was kind of warm out, and I just had this swarming around me everywhere I went. I went outside into the backyard, back in the house. I'd go back in the house and I was like, whoa, that perfume is here. I'd go back outdoors and the backyard was smelling like this. Outdoors where it can blow away. But this is more floral and very refined smelling. Somewhat like Tribeca in that Tribeca is more floral, has those white florals. This is like, I'm going to say jasmine and roses in here. Oh my gosh, that whole time I was not recording. Holy cow. Okay. I was so emphatic too. Oh my goodness. Okay. The Whispers of Truth. Um, one thing about it is it does have more of the Swarovski crystals on here. Can catch that bling. It has a lot more of the crystals than the other bottles. I believe it's four or five hundred on here. There's also a little aquamarine and light baby pink in here in this design. It is 18 karat gold cap, very elegant. The French glass, this is a solid white, polished, no seams. If you go to like a pharmacy or something, see like these little cheapies. If you look at the cheapy bottles, you see seams in the glass, and that's a sign that it's not very expensive. So when it's very smooth, there's no seams to be found, that's a sign of a very high quality product. So it has that and it is extra to parfum. This one, oh my goodness, this is the only one I know that can rival the sillage of Baccarat Rouge. This one rivals it. This one, wow. Yeah, oh my gosh, I forgot how good this one is too. I haven't worn it in a while. This one, it opens with a burst of citrus, a very vibrant citrus to get your attention. But as you know, all those citrus openings last like five hot minutes, right? And then you have this beautiful rose jasmine in the most refined, smooth, elegant fashion. This is not an indolic jasmine. This is a oh, just smooth, elegant, intoxicating, and then what's in here is this caramel and musk. It's so incredible. It is not a burnt caramel. It is not the caramel like some other ones like Orchid Rouge. This caramel is like, you know those, those caramel candies that have the white center? It's like a soft, chewy caramel. White centers with this like vanilla cream center. It's a caramel like that and with this muskiness in the sillage on this. I mean, I'll be outdoors and then I'll go in and out because I'll be doing some yard, whatever. I tend to wear perfumes even doing yard work stuff, but I was out at the, out, I have an outdoor kitchen. So I was out there and then running into the indoor kitchen and outside and I would come back in and be like, wow, it smells good in here. I'd go outside, outside where there is a breeze to blow the perfume away in the wide open outdoors. And all I smelled was whispers of truth, just floating everywhere. I mean, phenomenal. I'm telling you, this is the one. Yet there's a certain elegance, it's very refined elegance about it. It's, it's <sighs> captivating like grab you the back of the hair, kind of attention grabbing that sweet note in here. Even though it's not the same sweet note as Baccarat Rouge, which is more of a burnt saffron, this is more like a, an intense caramel, but not a burnt caramel. Like a vanilla caramel, musky vanilla caramel that's very intense. And it just grabs you, it grabs your attention. 
and that musk just kind of seduces you. Like there's something about this one that's incredible. Like it's just, it's incredible. And it's only gotten better. Like this is, God, I forgot how good this is. I gotta wear this one again. Oof, you are gonna be my scent of the day, honey bunches. Yes, you are. This one is phenomenal. Whisker, Whispers of Truth um, by House of Siage. Perfume Aroma. I already talked about this too, but I was not recording. Perfume Aroma in Italy is, this is a house I have 10 full bottles of now, plus some atomizers and samples. I really love this house. The entire house has phenomenal sillage. They're very high in oil content. They even spray like oil and they come with roller balls also. When you open the box, just pull that stuffing out and you'll see the roller ball underneath and the little uh, atomizer straw to put the cap on here. Oof, this stuff's intense. I love them all. Uh, Dolce Sinfo Nuggets, a lot of attention, uh, a few others. So I thought I would feature D'Ambrosia. D'Ambrosia, uh, this is like ambrosia salad, fruit salad. It has like fig and fruits and nuts and woods. They tend to be a little more simplistic in their notes, like very limited in their notes, but very intense and an intense sillage. I can just be getting in and out of my car and I'm catching a sillage of myself. The slightest movement and I get this intense gust and I personally like that. That's why I like putting it on my hands so that, cause I'm very talkative with my hands that if I wear fragrance here, it tends to waft around. Um, if I'm wearing a dress or skirt, I always spray my legs because again, that movement is gonna create that sillage, which is what I like. So highly recommend this one too. It's pear, grapes, and fig. The fig in here is, is really smells to me more like the pulp, not so much the milk or the leaves. Like I really get that fleshy pulp from it and the grapes help sweeten that up as long as well as pear. It's one of my favorite sweet notes. Um, the little bit of that almond going on here, not as much as they have another one that's a stronger almond. Dolce, uh, Dolce Aqua is a lot stronger almond. And then that creamy sandalwood in here. So it really is kind of like a fruit salad with that sandalwood. Really, really delicious uh, D'Ambrosia. Dolce Sinfondo is their very well-known vanilla. It's one of the best vanillas with a little twist of lemon in there. It's just phenomenal too. Another one with just a phenomenal sillage, and a lot of people don't talk about it, is Wardesina by Zerjoff. I don't hear a lot of people talk about this. I think because it kind of makes it a blind bite for people, they haven't heard a lot about it, it makes them nervous. So, I mean, oh, man almighty, I like this one. This one is a rose oud, but it has a very powdery element to it. Very powdery. The oud in here is what gives it substance, gives it this um, power, gives it the power to the fragrance. And then it's a powdery rose, a little bit more, uh, it's not quite talcum powder, but leans into the cosmetic -y talcum powder kind of realm. This, let me tell you, this sillage, I swear, will permeate concrete. This stuff will go through office buildings. It will go up to, it'll, it'll hop a ride in that elevator and go to the next floor. I'm telling you, the sillages here will go down halls, up and down corridors, up and down stairs, hop a ride on the elevator. This thing is gonna make its way through the building and there will be people like, who smells good? Where's that coming from? People, you'll see people in the hallway, like, like my dog when I'm cooking steak, right? The way he's like, hmm. Where's that coming from? Let me go find it. Same kind of thing. The most intoxicating thing. I actually wore this on a plane one time just for giggles. I knew they couldn't go anywhere. And I was like, I'm gonna play with them a little bit. Was that mean? I think, I don't know. Ooh, it's a sweet vanilla rose powdery. Now you're gonna see all kinds of notes on for granted. So I uh, just ignore them because literally it's a vanilla rose with the base of this oud. This is um, a woody rose with, it's a, it's a vanilla rose with this woody, 
musky powderiness to it. There's tobacco in here, but all that tobacco does is kind of keep this dryness to that powderiness is what it does. It, it's not a prominent tobacco kind of fragrance um, to me that it really just gives it dry. But it's this beautiful powdered sugar, pow almost like a combination between powdered sugar and talcum powder combined a little bit along with that rose and woods that just drift everywhere. It's so beautiful, so unique, so classy and elegant, this fragrance. There's something very regal about it, very composed. Something composed about it where you're letting the sillage do the talking for you is, is how this one is for me. But Wardesina by Zerjoff. Uh, the next one I don't have a full bottle for. It is on my list. And it's by Fragrance Dubois, who I haven't talked about in a while. And it's their... Oud Blue Intense. Now for the men, I do find this one more masculine leaning. Stunning sillage. Oh, it's a little better as an office or daytime controlled environment, warmer weather kind of a fragrance, but Oud Blue Intense is the most phenomenal sillage and the most mind-blowing combination. The way they have this airy aquatic fragrance it definitely it's blue meaning it's meant it's meant to make you think of blue and to me this open blue clear sky above the water just blue and blue is literally how it makes me feel because there's an openness to this fragrance yet what they did is they blended the fragrance and then once that was complete added the oud which allows it to be this combination that's mind-blowing where the oud doesn't overpower that you still have this light aquatic airy open refreshing classy kind of fragrance for a man with this hint of oud in there and it's just like how did you do this it's like an oxymoron literally like an oxymoron and the ouds they use are very very um they're very high end and smooth. They don't go stinky. And it's a very light and sweet almost kind of oud that just goes so perfectly. And it's like, how did you do that? How did you do that? But Oud Blue Intense has always been one of my favorites on a man. 100% uh, love, love that one. The next one is kind of weird, okay? I, this is going to be different because... This is how it happened. This house had three new releases and I was trying them to see which one I wanted a bottle of. And you know, I was doing what we always do. I had one on this arm, one on this arm, and I was wearing them and I was like, okay, this is cool, this one's cool. And then like an hour or two later, I just kept getting these hits of vanilla, like the most phenomenal vanilla and I was like, where is that now? Which arm is that coming from, doggone it? Like, I can't tell where it's coming from because it was just, it was just there. It was just everywhere around me. I just get these hits and it was, it, I couldn't isolate where it was coming from. I'd even sniff my arms and be like, I don't know. I don't know. It's not there when I sniff my arm. It's there crazy, right? I know. And then I even went back and forth and changed my order like three times. Like, no, 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 I got the wrong one. It's that one. No, no. Okay. I wore that one individually and it didn't happen. It must be the other one. Then I wore that one individually and I'm like, no, nah, I didn't do it either. It's the combo. You have to wear the combo. So this one, it's Juice Parfums. They have the brand new release and I love these new metallic bottles. So this one is Andaluiza. This one has incredible sillage. It has pomegranate and this tonka. So I thought that tonka was coming off like vanilla. No, I was getting the fruity kind of sillage. The other release, which is Spicy Delice, that one is dry spices in vanilla. So I thought, oh, the vanilla must be that, right? But when I wore it alone, I didn't get that sillage. 
amazing spiced vanilla. The inspiration on that one is his grandmother from uh, Algeria and her cooking and the way she always put these amazing Algerian spices in her cooking and he wanted to emphasize that. I have to, it's a vanilla, spiced vanilla like I never had because it's these beautiful dry spices in there in a very more crisp kind of fragrance. It's not a boozy creamy and it's not a fluff ball like ivory root and it, it doesn't have that same blended thing like tobacco vanilla. doesn't have the tobacco. It's vanilla and dry spices and it's stunning. But it took the combination for this sillage to carry this vanilla and it's phenomenal. Like phenomenal. It's just, it's like I need them both. I just, who knew? Like I've never been in that situation where I gotta buy both now. I, I gotta get both. So uh, yeah, both of them are phenomenal together, just out of this world, intoxicatingly good. Um, and another bonus is they are very sustainable. Their packaging, their packaging was different from the first bottle I got and then this bottle I got, more reduced, which I appreciated because such big bulky packaging for a for a company working so hard to be sustainable. But these are screw tops. Let's see if I can get this one. These are refillable, which is always nice. I do like the refillable screw caps. But Juice Parfums, which is uh, Joya Unique and Sensorial. And it's an acronym to be juice, like the juice, the liquid in here, which is really cute and fun. But Andalusia is, a, I'm sorry, a beautiful pomegranate, creamy, tonka bean, fruity, creamy. Um, if you could imagine a pomegranate shake, is how this one is. But then you mix that pomegranate shake with the dry spiced vanilla. Oh, mamma mia. Oi, yai, yai. Yeah. Um, I do find the spicy delice to be stunning on a man, the way it's this dry, crisp kind of dry spices. Um, what are the dry spices in there? But just, it's a stunning combination is all I can say. It's just a, uh, yeah, imagine mixing a pomegranate shake, creamy shake with the vanilla and spices and then this sillage that just, yeah. Another one that when I wore this, I was just captivated by the scent around me and I was outdoors is Aaron Terrence Hughes Hard Candy. Now this hard, he loves these double entendres and he's a little cheeky about them too when he says hard candy. But it really is about Starburst. Um, there's a different name in London for Starburst. I'll put the picture on the screen because I think in different countries it's called something else. But he wanted it to be like hard boiled candies, but the flavors he really picked from Starburst. And it's really what I get. I get like this strawberry and pineapple. It's in a gorgeous base of sandalwood and patchouli that really gives it the weight and that projection and that beefiness to the fragrance. But what you're getting is this sweet, fruity, intoxicating beast. There's lemon, mandarin, and orange. There's strawberry and pineapple in there too. I know he personally told me pineapple in here. It's, um, oh my goodness, this one is so good and so sweet and thick. And just, I was in the outdoors I was on the trails walking my dogs and I could not believe how this was in the air and just around me and just like thumping off of me. And it was the sweetest, you know, I love my fruities, right? Like this was one of the best gourmands, fruity gourmands, which is my preference. That was just so satisfying to me. Um, and. I don't hear a lot of people talk about it either. It does sell out. You got to be quick. He does these restocks. I think right now he's going through. Um, he like stopped. He kind of marked everything as zero. A lot of times he does that. You have to pay attention to him on his social media where he'll announce that. I think he's down for like a month where he's like restocking and changing things around. So he marks everything as in zero inventory. It's basically his way of just like halting sales while he makes some changes. But this is when you really need to get your hands on. Absolutely love hard candy. The next one is newer to my collection. 
I told you I was in love with Soradora and I am going to slowly accumulate them because I'm not in love with this brand and everything they did is a hit to me. Um, but I do have like my top three and that is the Mandarle, the Orchidy Rouge and Brophy Alande. This one, yeah, the three like they all tie for first place. Let's put it that way. They, they like clamor over each other. They, they trample each other for first place. It's really who was last in my ear, nose, whatever. But this one opens with a burst of citruses. And then what you get is this, this vanilla cinnamon caramel mixture with a touch of rum in there, kind of just giving it a fall festive kind of flair but this one is so so good and they all have these incredible sillages and this one the overall vibe just almost has this like gingerbready kind of feel to it the way it's cinnamon and rum and vanilla and caramel and the sweetness and all this kind of blending it's so delicious and intoxicating and it particularly amazing in cooler to cold weather. It just, it has a warmth to it. Uh, it's, I just love this one. Like phenomenal, mad in love with this one. Like honestly, this Mandarle and Orchid Rouge, all three are so stunning. They all have a grip on my heart. Uh, but the Brookie Alande for 100%. I can't stop smelling it. Next, I have another new favorite of mine is by Dusita. Once I tried this, I understood what people meant by they really know how to do florals. They know how to do florals for the gourmand lover. There's something always very sweet about them. Um, they, they tend to be more fruity florals because I don't like plain Jane florals. I always need that little bit of sweetness in there for me. And Anamkara, man, oh, this is one I fell head over heels for. Now, what's really funny is because for me, this one has like a grapeness to it. It smells like a grape flower, if that makes sense. Like I definitely get a grape, a very strong grape fruity flavor from it. Um, and then it dries down to this kind of semi-sweet, powdery vanilla. It's really that that grape turns more into this like peach grape kind of sweetness. It has this beautiful sensual, like it's perfect for this top, this beautiful white, pink, purple swirl kind of vision is what you get, like butterflies dancing kind of feel to this fragrance, something beautiful and feminine and sillage and just, it gives a very romantic kind of sillage to it that I absolutely love, Anamkara. Um, I, I totally fell in love with this. Oh no, I think I've been wiping off her signature on here. I think I smeared her signature. Oh, nuts, with grabbing it, but Anamkara. The next one is by L'Orchestra and it is Rose Trombone. I, I mentioned Piano Santal from this house. Uh, it is a brand that they're very central around music. So every fragrance is named after a musical instrument and a prominent note and then there is an affiliated piece to go with it that matches the vibe. And they have a very well-known brass player who plays the trombone, obviously, and he does a lot of New Orleans jazz. So if you're familiar with that new New Orleans jazz style, but it's meant to take place in a Harlem, New York jazz club, sultry, like dusky, dark, kind of sensual kind of vibe going on to it. And it's this rose with a sweet pear note in here, but it's a very clean rose with the sweetness of that pear and this vanilla sandalwood musk. And it has this very sultry, magnetic energy, sensual kind of vibe to it. It's meant to be like you're locking eyes with someone and you just like, there's this magnetism in the air, which is the vibe that this one gives you. It's such a beautiful, hypnotizing kind of fragrance. 
with a clean but very sweet. Like if you know uh, the pear note in La Vie Belle, where you get this beautiful sweet pear note, but it's definitely toned down from that fragrance. Um, but it's that same sweet pear, but smooth and sultry. Where La Vie Belle is like a roar kind of, you know, she's like barreling in the door. This is sweet slow motion, jazz, sensual kind of fragrance that it's it's sultry and seductive, yeah, just magnetic energy that like when you just have this energy with someone that you're attracted to and it's just like everything else fades out and then there's just you're the only two in the room kind of a feeling. That's this the energy from this fragrance. Very captivating sillage that just kind of makes the attention on you with this sillage that kind of swirls and just keeps sending them right back to you. But rose trombone. There are so many great fragrances with an incredible sillage to them. I hope I introduced you to some others that you might not know about that really put some others to shame. They're just either newer or not as heavily marketed, so you might not know about them. And there's something to not having, you know, your fragrance be associated with somebody else because it's the last thing you want is to be with somebody and the fragrance you're wearing is so common that they have a negative memory with it. When you wear something that doesn't have those associations yet for other people, it's now associated with you. And now, because you're the first person they've smelled it with, anyone else they smell it on, they think of you. And that's really what you want. So I hope this helped. Um, if you like this kind of content, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can find out about more fragrances. I love being with you and I will see you in the next one. Mwah.